quite right. disgusting. We're Would ready not to get this it. underway. All right, everybody, welcome back to the ESOC Mono Civ Cup and part of the Grand Tour. I feel like I'm advertising for Amazon every time I say that with Jeremy Clarkson and his cronies. Thankfully, they're not another series of that. Good Lord, it was awful, wasn't it? But this is week weekend number two of eight weekends where we have one-day events. If you are tuning in, the rules for this specific one, each one will be different. This one, each player can only have one civilization. And they cannot change it. They must play that civilization the whole tournament. So uh, we've seen a lot of India. We've seen a lot of British. We're seeing some more British now. But we're also seeing Chinese. Maito electing to play Japan for this tournament and has gotten this far with them so far. So it must be doing reasonably well. We'll have to see what we have in store today from him. And uh, for Japan to do well, I think he has to play some unusual styles because uh, standard Japan isn't always going to work. We'll see what we have in store from Maito. Oh. Killing the divine striking that wolf there. Going to pick himself up 40 food. Cherry Orchard off to do some scouting. And we do have a shrine in base there going up early things from the Japan player. Let's move down to Nushal Bear. Nushal Bear? Uh, not quite sure. It means Teddy Bear. Very nice. Here he is. Where is the really. British? It does. I think it means Cuddle Bear. Something oh. like that. I don't think it I don't think it translates quite well uh, in this. I don't know. It's uh, the friendliest I, let's not name get into it. Let's not get into that discussion, but uh, building a market, getting that coin trade, and very likely to be getting his hunting dogs. In fact, will be getting his hunting dogs. Yeah. Anyone is confused. The previous game was Azank versus Sompu Kanku. We've now switched over to Mito versus Neutral Bear here, and that is because Aze needs to charge his laptop up in order to play the final game in that series. So uh, we will be returning to that later on, but for now, we do have this to enjoy. Ryan, what have you noticed so far? Um, I mean, not, there's not, there's been too much to notice. I mean, both players are just scouting and doing normal stuff. I mean, the British player is going for a market and shopping a lot. He might actually get housed. He's only got one villa left in the queue, um, and it's probably about you know a quarter of the way made right now. So that's really the only thing to watch for. He's gonna have okay, to race his house out. He does get the he's got the wood for that house and putting two villages on that to get it up nice and quickly. Might. Uh, as you say, uh, he's, he's popped. Uh, we'll see if it uh, does result. I mean, it's going to be a bit of idle time, but maybe it's still okay. Uh, the villa hasn't come out yet, so he oh, did manage to make it. It just came out just now, so actually just in time. So that's uh, a relief for him. Nicely done. Very well timed, perhaps cutting it a little bit fine, but uh, going to be getting his hunting dogs uh, all the same. So nice things from British there. 300 wood has arrived. The Japan Japanese players first. Mito, 300 wood is his first card. Oh, yeah. That is uh, unusual. We usually see Heavenly Kami. We're not going to go into that. We all know what that does. But 300 wood, nonetheless. What do you suppose, Mr. Mang? Well, I, what I do like about this is because he started with 200 wood. So the 300 wood gives him exactly the right amount of wood to build three shrines. So he goes from having a one shrine opener to a four shrine opener, which... Um, is, is pretty nice, and I also think that you know the Portuguese consulate and Kami, we are, we all know those builds aren't working, so he has to do something different. Um, it looks like he's opted for three hundred wood as his way to do that. That's interesting. Forgoing the consulate, which is you know quite effective, it makes a, a significant reduction in the cost of both shrines, and indeed your age up wonder. Uh, though the thing is here with the three hundred wood, you do get more shrines more quickly, and you don't have to build the consulate. You are going to get to the next stage uh, much faster. Unusual. We'll see how that this game. Ow. Absolutely. What's he saying? Wow. To what's he spotted? One of my vills hasn't been gathering. Oh, really? What Holy! I haven't noticed it. Oh, it got stuck on the berries. That's that's that's. I'm not surprised that he's uh, unhappy. Uh, perhaps he won't be that far ahead after all. Then, in terms of, uh, I wonder if he'll offer a restart. We'll see. <laughs> I that don't would know be about the that. Gentle thing to do, wouldn't it? I would just but, take that advantage to the bank here. It's a big, big <laughs> series. Mankel. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, but that is sad for Maito. Uh, but he's going to have to deal with it. Uh, we'll see how that affects the game. Absolutely. What we have here, British Villager coming forward. Uh, has he s spotted anything unusual from his opponent? I guess you can't really tell about Heavenly Kami, can you? You can't really know if it's been shipped. Well, you, you can, because um, you can tell by how early he built the shrines that there's no heavily, heavenly kami. Although he yeah. hasn't seen the shrines up here, I don't think, so yeah. he may just have quite no hard idea. To... Yeah, exactly. It's 
allowed to see anything as British. You only have that one explorer, so this could be a forward villager uh, setting up for some early aggression. Divine strikes, divine strikes, Mike. No, he's running away. Okay. All right. There you go. No. Wow, that was incredible. That was uh, that was a steal, an absolute steal. He's got to stop typing and start playing, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> nice assessment there. I like that. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what the British early aggression will be and how it's going to be met by a, a faster aging Japanese player. Consulate now going down, getting that during that transition instead. Yeah, I mean the typical thing to do is just to build a racks and go uh, bow pike, where you get you know you get your first batch of pikes out, mm -hmm. maybe or two, and try and put the siege pressure on, and then the rest of it's just you know making more longbow than they can make Yumi, which makes it quite tough. Yeah, um, but again, I don't know it's what's going to happen when we when you have a, a Japanese consulate opener. I wonder what that'll be met by. I think here, you know, going to have units uh, ready on time. Moto has got his racks up. Uh, let's take a look at the oh, units in queue. The, the Shinobu things, right? Ah, oh, that's coming out of the console, isn't it? Yeah. What's he going to queue up at the uh, at the barracks? Is what I'm interested in. He's got Ashi and Q at the barracks. Um, and he's sieging the town tower with the... Uh, look at all that damage he's managed to do. The explorer are doing yeah, quite a lot of damage to the 25% damage. And five Ashi shipmen. He's going to go uh, ham on that tower. And if five pikes yeah. are the first units, he might just get to walk up and kill that tower. So Nothing in Q at the moment from the British player, actually. Uh, no units uh, being trained. In fact, he's completely uh, misread what might what going to oh, do here. Pardon me, I was mistaken. I was looking at the wrong tab five four musketeers coming out yeah he's just walking he's being aggressive gotten lots of damage on that and he's just going to kill it down is that the first thing you go for or yeah you i think you, I, mean, I mean i don't know i think i would probably kill the tower but it looks like he's just going to push past the racks and there's only one musket in queue and a racks being raced up at home um i guess it's probably right to kill the racks i mean He's behind it now, so he can stay out of range of the tower, and... Yeah, um, that, looks like the, uh, that looks like what he's trying to do. There's going to be muskets that could pop out any second now. Quite good But I don't know that it's really use worth it. The, Shino the, the Shinobi is actually a quite powerful siege. That's, yeah, does he have a... Is he gonna, he's built another Rex in base there. Another 5 Ashi shipment? Really, really aggro... Aggro Japan! To face Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, and he is just cleaning house here, killing all these muskets. I, I wonder if Knuckle, Knuckle Virus doesn't know what to do, just looking at the muskets, he's like, wow. <laughs> villager down or not, maybe, uh, maybe he said that on purpose, it wasn't true. Oh, my villager hasn't been gathering, and Knuckle Virus, like, ho ho ho, give him that full sense of confidence. Give it, yeah, then... just give him the XP treasure so he feels confident. Here comes the huge <laughs> Minutemen pop, though. Huge Minutemen pop. Yeah. And, uh, but at the same time, these longbows are getting cleaned up before the minutes come, and he ransoms his explorer on the wrong side. So there's going to be a good opportunity for the, for the Japanese units here to just clean house. You're right, and now because that all the timings were a bit off, all of these yeah. units are going to be killed much more easily. Four longbows coming out as well, but too might little, too late. There's it just might so a good many job of ignoring this explorer. Units here. He's going to be able to take these down real fast. Great job of ignoring the explorer here to kill every longbow. Uh, there's only oh, one more longbow in queue, and Knucklebar's only got the resource to make at most two more longbows, so he's going to have... Oh, and the sixth longbow shipment coming in here. A desperation shipment from Brit to send that. Oh god, this, this came in moments. Imagine if he gave our an extra 30 seconds. This stuff would have been so much more nasty, and it would have been so much more effective. The speed at which he came in has been really a really key point in this game. That Yeah. I love. I like the fact that. Uh, I mean, if you look at all the shipments he's forced out of Knucklebar, it's been like getting the six longbow is, is really important for him because you know he did double five Ashi, and now he's gonna. Cl oh, the tower got repaired. Wow. So I guess he's not gonna kill that as easily. Still um, a wasted wood. Um, that's not too bad, I, I suppose. But uh, behind this, uh, you know, Mito still has a few units on the board. Is able to do some. Is able to uh, well, actually not going to go for this. No, continuing to go for this tower. But more importantly, has sent four villagers behind this as well. So the recalculated economic unit population. Mito actually ahead here. So. Yeah, and he's able to build shrines too. Um, like he, he, you'll notice he's starting to to slowly expand his shrine count here. Well, well that's um, true. It's a bit like playing British, isn't it? <laughs> you can still make them. They're not quite as good. Uh, without the uh, heavenly kami and such, 
and the, sh the Tashoga Shrine. Um, actually, he still went for that. Sh interesting. And re this is with... yeah. What I like about this is it's completely changed the dynamic of the matchup. Where it used to like we were talking about the longbow pressure on the front door, the ten pike sieging, all that's out the window now after this play. And instead, you've got a bridge player with two raxes in base, and you know just. Um, like ten longbow running around the map trying to chase down Ashy, which is not. <laughs> you not can't with, catch those. You're not right. Like they're not. On, they're not on the front door putting pressure on Japan, and uh, Mito using the rickshaw wagon to set up another, um, another barracks. Looks like he's just going to keep making Ashy here. Yeah. In a really good spot. He's going to be really pleased with what he accomplished there. That age one. Pardon me. That age two early pressure, gone really, really nicely, and now transitioning into sort of a, the middle part of the game there, where he's got his new Seiko set up behind it, and uh, he's able to get the shrines up that he forgot, that was foregone earlier. Yeah, and that tower getting repaired again, for the record, it's, it's actually quite important that he keeps it at high HP, because it gives him the control of the middle of the map. Yeah, it just gives him more time every time he comes back to Siege, so that his units can actually get there on time and stop it from being Siege, topping its HP up. What's Quite interesting? Useful. What's it? Yeah, and what's interesting here is these these extra eight Ashy haven't been seen by Knucklebar, so he might get a little overconfident here, and yeah. Mito might be able to with the speed of the Ashy, he may just be able to run down these longbow. Um, ooh, is he, he's going to definitely snipe this explorer. Oh, shrine! One tick away. <laughs> How much is it? Oh my god, that's so high. He's going to send a bill to finish it. Um, but yeah. this is what I was talking about. These Ashy are fast, and if he gets rid of the Shinobu in the group, which he's doing. If he's identified that he needs to be moving fast, nope, never mind. Getting back. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe he's afraid. I'm surprised. Well, he can see I think he, he could win that fight. I think. Do you think yeah. so? Well, he, he can see all of those units near the shrine. He's not going to risk it at the moment. Perhaps something else that he wanted to do at home. Read. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe maybe he's waiting for. What is he doing? What do you think he's going to switch to? Well, he, he could have had a batch. I think the five Ashes have just come out. Uh, what's he going to switch to? I, I am not he's sure. Yumi well, Ashi blend, and he's been re-shrining. So you have to, like, if you look at his shrine, net shrine pop, it's actually higher, even though he's going to lose these two, than it was like earlier in the game. Yumi Ashi blend, eh? That sounds like a delicious breakfast smoothie. <laughs> I'll have one of those, please. Uh, what, All right, what is British? Is yeah, what I'm waiting to see is more of what Japan will do. Like, what, like when when the Brit when when the British player starts putting pressure on these North shrines, is he gonna? He should be trying to re-shrine on the bottom and probably pushing this tower. But uh, we'll see what he what he uh, picks here. Yeah, it's interesting what targets he's gonna go for. I mean, there's these four shrines up here. We also have to remember, like British is that. British, when this hunt runs out, there's gonna be a big downtime and gathering for British. So yeah. Um, because he's going to have to relocate all those villagers. It looks like Mito's opting just to kind of posture around the shrines that he's he's getting sieged and try to defend those. Um, it's going to be a tough tough thing for him to do before he gets his Big Yumi mass up. Though. Clash of units here, though. It looks like Mito coming in for the large Shigeru army. Yumi's in the back there. Uh, the longbow being pulled into the musketeers, trying to get away. One volley goes off, takes down just one Ashi, though. Not very well spread. Uh, Yunus definitely up in the fight here. Uh, and I think Yumi and Ashi are the stronger units in these two in these two combos. I think here, Mito going to have a nice fight. Yeah. And those Ashi do have, those muskets do have an attack card on them. Whereas none of Mito's units do, but Yumi are just so good in the back line here. And... These, this uh, explorer tanking a little bit and really just cleaning it up by having more units. And this was exactly the cleanup that Mito needed, so now he can kind of shrine with it without worrying about losing. Oh, his explorer saving it nicely. That's actually a big deal because otherwise he can't go out on the map and build shrines. Yeah, and he's reshrining over here. Really good job of keeping the map occupied with shrines. And like we said, Brit this hunt is. You know, villagers not gathering, and all the front door hunts are actually under pressure from these Yumi now. So I guess this is kind of his only safe hunt, and Mito's going to go over there and shrine that next, I almost guarantee it. <laughs> Stop him forgetting that as well. That is the trouble with shrines, you can also just uh, deny food, food. 700 gold now coming in for the British player here, and the stable is indeed up. Going to be using that, I would imagine, to train some hussars. Definitely some in queue at the moment. Four in queue, in fact, I can see here. No, six, six. So he's oh right, five plus one. That makes sense. And Mito's remixing Ashi, which is is actually brilliant for him right now. And he does have Ashi attack in now. 
Is he finally going to get that outpost down? Has been denied here, uh, forcing those musketeers away. He's going to need a few different. Uh, okay, five hussars now hitting the board, and this could be the units uh, that he needs to do something relevant. As you mentioned, he's got the musketeer attack. So this is a reasonably good fight if those hussars can do something on the Yumi. It looks like he might be able to. All the Yumi at the back there. Uh, okay, the uh, Yumi trying to get away. And uh, Hussar's not sure what they want to do. Walking around a lot. Lost a couple. Still walking around. He's got UK okay, fight going onto the Yumi, but the Ashis, uh, human hand attack. Looks like they're running around. Not not the desired outcome, I think. The Hussar's taking a lot of damage before they can actually do anything. And now those Yumi's in the back again can be really, really effective against these heavy infantry. Having to retreat, but uh, the Ashis have more Just speed. One Ashi's snaring. Be able to catch up. One Ashi's snaring by mistake. It's going to convert <laughs> into another musketeer kill. No, it's well, not. Like, you sent and the call as well. You're yeah, lagging out a little bit right now. I will fix that. Oh, you're back now. You're good. Looks like um, like we, like I was saying, all the villas moving out to this bottom hunt, and good job though for for, uh, for knuckle bar here hurting this hunt in. Is gonna get, give him another set of food, but a lot of units on the front door here, and, and these nine cab really have to do a lot of work. Okay, I've changed the priorities of Discord to have uh, priority yeah, yeah, yeah. access to the bandwidth. Yeah, you're good. Okay. These three huts are they gonna snare? Lots of one HP minutes dying here, which is always always good when you can get a couple of volleys off on those to clear, clear them out early in a fight. Um, Absolutely. Muskets on muskets, cav on Yumi. This is exactly the position that um, that Knucklebar wants, but it might not be enough at this point with just how much how much mass Mito has at this point. And this is keep in mind that this is the point where Japan just sent the cherry orchards as well, and he's still kind of crushing it in the in the fight. So. Japan having to skip that shipment and still totally fine. You're lagging out to me now, but that's probably me lagging out to you, not the other way around. Huh. Does shoot a villager? There's another villager. Two, three villagers. Nice. And uh, I mean, look at look at the economic po population again. It's 64 to 52. All the players today doing a great job of, you know, with all these conflicts, still keeping their ecos really large. Um, so I mean. Although you look at the military and it's tough, uh, tough for Knucklebar, he still has more vills than Mito does. That is true, but we do, it could be evened up here. Well, actually, no, it's going to get even more. There's units coming to attack these hunts. Um, looks like he's seen it on the way, though. One villager uh, does die, but does manage to save the rest, scouts for them, manages to yell just in time. <laughs> Demo Mochitada, though, does arrive. Uh, That's big. He's joining the, the Japanese units just get so strong in late colonial, and... Mito clearing out these houses also is change is changing the vision that Knucklebar has, and it makes it more likely that he'll be able to catch his opponent out. Mm. All right, what does British what does British want to do here then? Because uh, that hunt is really really awkward. That's the last uh, big access to hunt that he has. Uh, with these units, he has you know the Yumi, uh, pardon me, the Longbow Musketeers and the Hussars. He's going to need to uh, open up some more some more hunt. But where exactly is that? I mean, there's a location over here. Uh, but that's quite close to, to uh, my wow. Taiwanese production. Where else can he gather food? I mean, I don't know where else he can gather food. That's the thing. He has to go to mills. So he's on this ticking time bomb where although he has 15 more bills, it doesn't really matter when they all have to be chopping wood for mills soon. Um, but meanwhile, this, this Hussar raid did pick up two or three bills. And at the same time, there's now a massive Nagi on the field rounding out uh, Mido's combo. So it's going to be a lot harder to to win these fights when both players have a three-unit combo. That was one thing that Knucklebar had going for him that now Mito also has. Mm. I think Discord might be experiencing issues, unless it's my internet. Because uh, your voice keeps cutting down, cutting out for me. You're not cutting out for me, so we're good. Well, on, like, on the stream, we're good at least. Well, that's good. Uh, Longbow is able to kill up some villagers here. This is probably the conflict that decides the entire game, quite frankly. The calves are going to come swinging in. Where where are Mido's calves? They're all back at home. This could be a, an opportunity for these. Oh wow, the daimyo though on these longbow. He's training units though from the daimyo. 
Yeah. No, he's uh, cancelled so, def- And he's able to attack. He's not able to move whilst training. Yeah, he cancelled uh, the train. Hus- Hussar's able to get onto the Yumi as well around the corner. Sadly, though, those trees really causing some issues. Bringing the Hussars back to get the Naginata. Uh, definitely quite effective against Naginata. Longbow in the back for supplying some damage. Uh, these units from the from where they were fighting the Mototada now coming in as well. Uh, remember, all these villagers are here, and they're going to be soaking up. I think Maito, uh, with that lead, plus the stronger units, is uh, going to be able to take this fight here. Look, massive amount of cab now coming in, and if that, if anyone had any doubt before, this is going to change their mind on straight onto those longbows. Not that they're even needed there. Clean them up, plus 10s everywhere, and that does end this fight in the middle of the map there. Uh, not even losing too much of a lead on the economic unit population either, but an astounding lead for military and now able to walk into his opponent's base, especially since, look, Mill's going up here. Uh, unit production is going to be severely uh, stifled, stopped, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um... And uh, Maito going to be able to do whatever he wants here. Walking straight towards this gold mine. Look, his, his villages are being uh, harassed by the Naganata, moving down to this coin mine here. And there's not really very much escape. I'd like to see him split up some of the units there so that they can't go through the trees. Blue bringing in his units to defend here, but it is GG as he says in the chat there. Too many villagers lost and not enough military units. Maito with a very, very large lead there. Maito takes game number one in this first series. But before we move on to game number two, I think we will be returning to Azamk versus 